Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another expression episode. In episode 171, we will be talking about the common English idiom, when pigs fly. It's going to be very fun. You'll hear a joke, we'll go through the expression, and we'll do some pronunciation exercises. In part two of today's lesson, which will be posted next week, you'll hear all about Amelia Earhart. And I have to tell you, she is fiercely inspiring. She was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic and the first woman, as far as I'm aware, to try to fly around the globe. Her story is mysterious, interesting in so many different respects, and just inspiring. I know I keep saying that word, but that's what she is. She was so inspiring. Be sure to stay tuned until part two. That will be posted next week. Remember, all of my episodes contain premium content. Premium content includes an annotated transcript, so you'll see the key vocabulary highlighted. You'll get a definitions page of that key vocabulary, and you'll also get a quiz to test your listening comprehension. Premium content also comes with the downloadable transcript and MP3, so you can print them out on your computer and work through the material as much or as little as you would like. But I do find that very useful for those of you who want to dive deeper into this podcast. There's a lot of good material there. You can find the link to premium content in the episode notes. Let's go ahead and begin today's episode. As usual, we'll start with a joke. Are you ready? Why did the pig become an actor? Do you know? Because he was a real ham. (laughs) Do you get it? Ham has two meanings. There's the literal meaning. Ham is the meat from a pig. So for lunch, the kid packed a ham and cheese sandwich. And then ham is also a slang term. We call someone a ham who is overly theatrical, exaggerated, or loves to perform and be the center of attention, just like an actor. So people who know my daughter Julia well usually say, oh man, she's such a ham. H-A-M. Because she likes to be the center of attention. She's loud. She's boisterous. She's a lot of fun. So the joke is funny because it combines the literal meaning of ham, related to the pig, with the slang meaning, someone who loves to perform. Let me tell it one more time. Why did the pig become an actor? Because he was a real ham. Let's move on to the expression of the day. We'll go through the individual word definitions first. Once again, the expression is when pigs fly. When has various functions in a sentence, but in this idiom, it is a conjunction. It refers to the time at which something happens. When will you finish your homework? When I have time. Pigs. Pigs is a plural noun. A pig is a domesticated, short-legged, omnivorous mammal within the family Suidae. Wow, that's a fancy definition. Pigs can be raised as pets, but many are raised for their meat, which we call pork, ham, bacon, etc. After seeing the movie Babe, I never wanted to eat bacon again. Do you guys remember that movie? So good. Fly is a verb. 
It means to move through the air using wings, to be airborne, either naturally, as in birds or insects, or mechanically, as in airplanes. Birds fly south for the winter. Now, the expression, when pigs fly, is pretty absurd, isn't it? Pigs don't have wings. They're chubby. They're somewhat fat, in other words. They do not look aerodynamic. It's very unlikely or even impossible that a pig will fly, which is the exact meaning of the idiomatic expression when pigs fly. Impossible. It's not gonna happen. We typically use this phrase as a response to either a question or commentary, especially when we want to exaggerate that something will never, ever happen. It's very similar to saying when hell freezes over, like I talked about in episode 49. It's also similar to saying not in a million years, absolutely not. Yeah, we'll go through a few more in a bit. (laughs) when pigs fly. It's sort of funny. So what's the origin of this expression? Well, when pigs fly is not part of a Scottish proverb, but something similar was mentioned in one way back in the late 16th century. The proverb goes, pigs fly in the air with their tails forward which was a sarcastic way of saying that something was utterly impossible. Now, it's believed that over time, this proverb evolved into the more concise expression, when pigs fly. With that said, the phrase has been used for centuries as a way to humorously convey disbelief or doubt when we believe that there is no way something can happen. Let's go through some examples of how to use this expression in everyday contexts. Example number one. Yesterday, Lucas and I were driving and talking about fear, just things in general that we're afraid of. Lucas isn't afraid of spiders or any kind of insect, but to a certain degree, he's afraid of heights. He has no problem hiking in the mountains. He feels Comfortable if his feet are on solid ground, but skydiving? No way. When I asked him if he'd ever go skydiving, he responded, Absolutely not. No way. Not in a million years. He could have responded, Yeah, sure. I'll go when pigs fly. In other words, I'll never go. Pigs don't fly. I'll go when pigs fly. Example number two. Imagine you're in a relationship with someone and you catch them cheating on you. That sucks, right? Now imagine that that cheating boyfriend or girlfriend wants to get back together. What's your immediate reaction? Would you take them back? Some of you might say, well, hear them out, listen to their side of the story. Sure. That's nice. Um, For others, cheating is a deal breaker. There's no way you're getting back together. Now, if you think cheating is a deal breaker, there are a few ways you could respond to your cheating ex. First one, and excuse my language, there's no way in hell I'd get back with you. Not in a million years, loser. (laughs) Or you could be like Taylor Swift and say, We're never, ever, ever getting back together. Or we could use our expression, sure, yeah, we can get back together. When pigs fly, in other words, absolutely not. We are not getting back together. All right, example number three. Imagine that you buy a fancy new car, maybe a Tesla, a Mercedes, a McLaren if you're real fancy. And your teenage son says he's going to drive it to a friend's house, right? So your son's 16 years old. He just got his driver's license. He doesn't have that much experience in cars. So you might think, hmm, 
I trust him, but I am not going to let him drive my shiny new car. In this circumstance, you could say, over my dead body. In other words, absolutely not. You are not taking my car by any means over my dead body. <laughs> or you could say, sure, son, when pigs fly. In other words, huh, nice try. That is not happening. I actually really like this when pigs fly example because once again, you give this idea, hey, you can do it, but wait, nope, absolutely not. So there's sort of a playfulness to it. And I like that. You'll also probably notice that so far, all of my examples of when pigs fly are used as a response, right? So someone says something and then you respond with, hmm, yeah, when pigs fly. Based on my personal opinion, that's the most common way it's used. So I'm just going to continue reinforcing that. Do you think our boss will give us a raise? <laughs> yeah, when pigs fly. In other words, no way, never. Jeff said he's going to stop smoking. Do you think he'll do it? Sure, when pigs fly. That guy's way too addicted. Once again, when pigs fly means that's impossible. That absolutely will not happen. It's very similar to the expression when hell freezes over. Not in a million years. That's not going to happen. So let's move to the pronunciation exercise. We'll start with sure. When pigs fly, repeat after me. Sure. Sure. When pigs. Sure. When pigs fly. Sure. When pigs fly. Good job. Now, I need to be honest here. A long time ago, I had a student who was absolutely obsessed with learning idioms. As a teacher, what was a little bit awkward to mention was how confused I was by his mixture of idioms. He'd clearly put a lot of effort into learning them and wasn't aware how regional some idioms are. Now, if you're taking the time to study idioms, be sure to know where they're used. Idiomatic language is not universal from one country to the next. Rest assured that on this podcast, most expressions that you'll come across are so common that another English speaker, regardless of where they're from, should understand what you're saying if you try to use them. If at any point, an expression I teach is regional, I'll be sure to mention that. Because idioms take courage to use. I know people love to use them. Every time Lucas uses one, he sort of smiles and then he looks at me for reassurance like, look what I did. Was that right? So I'm aware it takes confidence to use these, which is why I need one more disclaimer before the last pronunciation exercise. I still believe that you should get used to using when pigs fly as a response to someone else's comment or question. I know I've said this multiple times already. So when someone says, oh my god, I would never jump out of an airplane. I'm so afraid of heights. You could respond, same here. I'll go skydiving when pigs fly. Which brings me to the conjugation section. Repeat after me. I'll go skydiving when pigs fly. You'll go skydiving when pigs fly. He'll go skydiving when pigs fly. She'll go skydiving when pigs fly. It'll go skydiving when pigs fly. We'll go skydiving when pigs fly. They'll go skydiving when pigs fly. This particular pronunciation exercise is sort of funny because we're not conjugating when pigs fly. We're actually working on a contraction. 
with the pronoun and will. Some native speakers actually say these contractions differently. I'll, which is spelled I apostrophe L-L, can sound like I'll, A-I-S-L-E, in a supermarket, so the long pathway with products on either side. I'll, I'll, I'll call you later, okay? Occasionally, people will say I'll like all, like A-L-L. I'll be there this afternoon. I'll be there this afternoon. Hear that? I'll or all. Both are acceptable as the contraction of I with will. I'll or all. The rest are kind of fun. Repeat after me. You'll. He'll. She'll. It'll. We'll. They'll. All right. So each of those has a dark L sound at the end. If you have trouble with the dark L, be sure to separate the word in two. You all, you all, you all, heal, heal. Now rewind this part as many times as you need until these sounds feel normal coming out of your mouth. All right. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Be sure to stay tuned until next week. Once again, we'll be talking all about Amelia Earhart, and she's fiercely inspiring. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.